Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we will show you how to think like the rich. You won't have Listen it. to what they have it's to karma. say. I, every dollar I make, I kill myself to make it and I don't want to lose it. I cry like a baby when I lose 10 bucks. Like the other, the other day, I realized I forgot when I flew back from Dubai that I didn't have my, you know, my, my, my frequent flyer number on that ticket. <laughs> And I lost like 400 bucks. So I spent two hours calling the airline saying, I want my ticket back. I want wow. my ticket back. I'm crazy that way. Wow. I want value. Every single dollar is hard to make. And if you don't respect it, you're going to lose it. I don't, I don't waste money. First day is over. And she said, you did a great job. But now you've got to finish up and you've got to take all the gum off the floor. Oh. I said to her, look, you hired me as a scooper, not a scraper. And she said, no, no, I hired you as an employee. You do whatever I say. I own this store. If I'd known that, I probably wouldn't take this position. She said, how about this? You're fired. I, she said, it means you get back on your bicycle, go home, don't come back here. And I was so humiliated. But this is horrible. Whatever she says I have to do, I'm not going to live my life that way. I never worked another day in my life for somebody ever again. If I were starting over in my 20s with no money or assets, here are the top three things I would do to get started in investing. Number one, I would open a TD Ameritrade or an E-Trade account and immediately start putting in $25 to $100 a month and invest in index funds. I like VOO, VGT, and SLYV. Number two, I would open a Fundrise account so I could start investing in real estate immediately. You can start with as little as $10 and I would add to this account immediately. This is a great place to get into real estate with very little money. And number three, and this one is great. I would open an Acorns account. I love this app because you can set it to round up all of your little purchases. Then it invests that money immediately. I personally would set it to moderate risk. These are three great ways to get started with little money. Okay, so we have the plan. Let's go. In business, the biggest mistake I made was producing products or services that did not sell or producing products and services and not focusing enough energy on selling them. Nine out of ten mistakes that companies make is they produce a product or service that is not right for the market and as a result they lose a lot of time and money. So one of the things we know today is that if you have an idea for a product or service, before you start to spend time and money, you go to a customer and you say, I have this idea for this product or service, would you buy it? And find out, get a customer's opinion immediately. And that will tell you yes or no. And that's what Steve Jobs did, and Bill Gates did, that's what all the successful business people do. And this is where the rich will become richer, the poor will become poorer, and the middle class will get wiped out. And the reason why is because some people, rich people will understand money and they will continue teaching their kids. And everybody else, the majority of people who have no idea what's happening will continue to become poorer because they don't even see it happening. Which offer do you kick yourself for not taking? You know, um, and it's legendary now, the guy that had ring, he sold his company to Amazon for billions, right? So everybody passed. He wanted 600,000. I said, okay, listen, and I'll give you the $600,000 as a loan for three years. You know, not an outrageous interest rate, but I want two and a half percent of the company. I'll give you 600,000. He says, no. I said, you really should think about that. He said, nah, <laughs> I'm not going to think about it. So I would have made about $800 million. Oh. If you are 21 years old right now and you invested $6,200, which is the average household credit card debt right now. If you invest $6,200 right now and you got a 20% return on your money and you did that for the next 45, 46 years, you are going to retire with $20 million. $20 million. And you never invest another penny again. What I like is that both the shareholders and the employees of Berkshire are so extremely enthusiastic. And it's not just that they've made a lot of money and have nice careers. They think they're on the right side. My number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You gotta be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. No coach, no trainer, no mentor, uh, no boss can do it. You versus you. It's all in your mind. Whatever you hold in your mind will tend to occur in your life. 
If you continue to believe as you have always believed, you will continue to act as you have always acted. You will continue to get what you have always gotten. If you want different results in your life or your work, all you have to do is change your mind. Going forward 30 or so years, I was running Europe's largest private group of companies, but I didn't know the difference between gross and net profit, but it didn't matter. Yes, I was in a board meeting uh, when I was about 50 years old and um, uh, and the director, um, you don't know the difference between net and gross, do you? So I said, uh, no. Um, uh, he said, I thought not. Anyway, I brought a sheet of paper, so he brings out the sheet of paper and then he, he colours it in blue and then he puts a fishing net in the um, in it and then he puts a little fish in the fishing net and he says, um, so the fish that are in the net, that's your profit at the end of the year and the rest of the ocean, that's your gross turnover. I went, oh, got it. And, uh, <laughs> but the point of the story is it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's a good idea, most likely, if your chief accountant uh, knows. But for somebody who's running a company, what matters is can you, you know, can you create the best, um, the best company in its sector? People would rather gamble. I mean, the idea that you can double your money in six months—that that's just going to. It's why people go to the races, why they go to Vegas, you know, whatever it may be. They, they. They even know the odds are against them, and they still do it. I mean, it's a strong instinct to want to get rich fast, and I don't know how to do it. How do you choose your team based on what? Well, um, I suppose, honestly, that it tends to be gut feel more than anything else. So when I interview somebody, my interview question is always the same. It's what do you just, ask? I said, tell me the story of your life and, and the decisions that you made along the way and why you made them. And then... And also tell me about some of the most difficult problems you worked on and how you solved them. And um, that, that, that question, I think, is very important because the people that really solved the problem, they know exactly how they solved it. Um, they know the little details. And the people that pretended to solve the problem, they can maybe go one level and then they get stuck. Some people are not actually emotionally or psychologically fit to own stocks, but I think they're more of them would be if you get educated on what you're really buying, which is part of a business. And the longer you hold stocks, the less risky they become. Whereas the longer the maturity of a bond, the more risky it becomes. You meet somebody wealthy, they have family at one point was not wealthy. And then the one shows up. The one. One person changes the family tree forever. In my family, I'm the one. And it wasn't because I wanted it or I hoped for it. I fought for it. I want to win. I want to fight for my family. I want my mom and dad proud of me. I want my kids proud of me. I want me proud of me. I want to look in the mirror and be happy with the man I look back at. That he gave it everything. That he went for it.